The assignment is to give us a final instruction. The word instruction is very important. For many of us, we know instructions to mean commands. And so we fight it because we take it as an attempt to downplay your pedigree. Why should you give me an instruction? But instructions are very powerful because if and when they are done in righteousness and in love, they guide us with precision and exactitude into the place of destiny. When you drive, you can maneuver, you can have opinions, but when you fly, they call those who train pilots instructors, not drivers. Because in the air, you are not given the liberty to guess your way around. It's too risky. You may not have a second chance. Are we together? So those who train pilots are not called drivers. Those who train pilots are not even called coaches. They are called instructors because we fly by instruction. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, it says. It says they are life to those who find them. And remember the law is who, everyone that seeketh, findeth. If you do not seek, there is no finding. And health, it says, to their flesh. Hallelujah. I'm going to be giving us five prophetic instructions that I believe the Lord placed in my heart and then we'll have the impartation and we'll wrap up for tonight. I want you to please pay attention. Write every one of them down. These are the instructions that if we keep in righteousness and by the grace of God, there is a guarantee that not only our break, but even 2023 would start on a good note. Most times, because believers are bankrupt of prophetic instructions, we tend to abort that which we have spent time, even the whole year, building. You can imagine someone who has spent all the time building, laboring, and then because of carelessness, you lose everything. God is Alpha Omega. He does not start and leave it there. He starts and finishes. Are we together? Instruction number one. This is God's word to us as a global family. And then it extends to the body of Christ. Number one. Give yourself continually to the word and prayer. Please write it down. Give yourself continually to the word and and prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 this is the first prophetic instruction god is giving us that if we are to be light and salt indeed even whilst we're on the break and you know all through our christian experience it's important for us to understand that we must give ourselves continually to the word and to prayer in acts chapter 6 verse 4 this was the counsel of the apostles they said but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word are we together give yourself continually to prayer and the word in first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16 first timothy chapter 4 15 and 16 it says meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting will never appear unto all when you take casual spiritual things. The matters of the word, the matters of prayer. You must meditate upon these things. There are some these things you have learned throughout this year. It says you have a responsibility. In fact, the Bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting the validity of your Christian experience. Are we together? Yeah. So number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Very quickly. Number two, what is the second instruction that God is giving us? Number two, invest in your health and your well-being. Invest in your health and your well-being. All through this break and for the rest of your life, invest in your health and well-being. I put in bracket rest. R-E-S-T. Please write it. Isn't it amazing that rest can be an instruction? Rest. 
in Genesis chapter 2 and 2 and 3 Genesis chapter 2 2 and 3 a scripture that delivered me years ago and on the seventh day God ended his work that means if you are lazy you are not like God please look up this is a message already for someone the Bible says even though God owns all things it was not an excuse for laziness how can the Creator still be working the Bible says on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested and he rested and he rested God rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made verse 3 and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work can I tell you rest medical science tells us that rest is therapeutic there are many people who have died today not because of demons it is the absence of the understanding of the laws of life are we together now spirituality if not tampered with wisdom can lead a man to destruction especially in Africa we pride in a lot of fanatism without the boundary that wisdom brings and we stretch ourselves not knowing that we are still bound in this mortal body and we do that to our detriment there are people today collapsing left right and center you see the thing about health as I have learned is that the consequences are not seen immediately it usually accumulates one upon another if in your 40s you start having a health problem chances are excellent it is the cumulative effect of carelessness from right from early 20s just because you are careless with your body and you wake up fine does not mean you are all right are we together give yourself continually to word and prayer and then invest in your health in Mark chapter 4 from verse 38, very powerful scripture. Mark 4, 38. Apostle, you are saying I should rest. It's because you don't know the fire that is on my mountain. The Bible says, and as he was in the hinder part, the he being Jesus of the sheep, asleep on a pillow. In fact, let's do 37. Let's start from 37. The Bible says the disciples were going to the other side and there arose a great storm of wind. Is that in your Bible? And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. What happened to Jesus? And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. What details? You can rest in the midst of storms. Don't give me an excuse that because the, there are storms, you do not rest. Jesus showed us that even in the midst of storms, I will soar with you above the clouds. Father, you are king over the storm. And I will be still and you are God. My soul be still. Sing it one more time for me. When the ocean rolls, I will soar with you above the cloud. Father, you are king over the storm. I will be still. I will be still. Also, right now, if I if I have a way of getting, even if it's a small bag of rice, I will be the happiest person. Rest. Rest is not all about closing your eyes. You can close your eyes and still be awake. I hope you know that. In fact, there is a there is a skill of worry that happens only when your eyes are closed because then your imagination is alive. Rest. Even though I'm talking about your health, it extends to every... Let me tell you this. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. It's in your Bible. Except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. It says the watchmen watch it but in vain. That it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But here is a gift many of us have not received. But he giveth his beloved. So rest and sleep is a gift. 
you have accepted anointing when God stretches his hands, collect everything that comes from him. Rest is a gift that also comes from him. He giveth his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Invest in your health as a commitment to your longevity. I have charged you here. I do not believe that medical science is, is an interruption to faith. Faith is a journey and believers grow and transit there is a level of divine health in experience but while we are transiting to that dimension we thank god for the gift and the blessings of medical science that midwife our health while we keep transiting do not feel embarrassed to seek the attention of medical science you are sick and you pray and it does not work please go and don't be discouraged there are many people who just Paying attention to a doctor's report can, can bring to end many needless prayer points. Prophesy to yourself. Say rest. rest. Say my soul. My soul. Find, rest. find rest. My body. My body. Find, rest. find rest. You know, we speak to our souls and we leave our bodies. Find rest. Is someone learning already? Take it as an instruction. Rest. When you close your door, don't just say I'm um, praying you when you are done praying rest there are times you can lie down quietly this is one of the reasons why in spite of the blessing of the Lord especially upon Africa it looks like you know statistic tells us that the the average lifespan I don't know if it's if I've not verified the latest but I think it was about 48 or there about you know um, some time back minus me In the name of Jesus Christ it says with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation but you must rest so use this opportunity to rest use this opportunity to rest number three invest in building and maintaining your relationships this is the third prophetic instruction invest in building and maintaining your relationships Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please, from verse 9 and 10. Invest in building and maintaining your relationships. The Bible declares without confusion that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10, it says, For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up men don't just stand up they are helped to go up are we together relationships are advantageous connections i have told us extensively we have dealt with it here that one of the dominion systems of the kingdom is the power of relationships the word be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships everything there is nothing that multiplies in isolation even the seed, it is in a relationship and partnership with the ground, the soil, that it produces. For if it abides alone, it does not grow except it falls to the ground. Hallelujah. Your possibilities are relationship dependent. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your relationship with men. And here by relationship, I mean number one, family. This is an opportunity to catch up with family. Listen, let me tell you something one of the wisdom keys i am praying that god will help us understand is that there are people in your life today who may not be in your life tomorrow again it is important to maximize moments because life is transitory sometimes we are busy making money busy trying to make a name that we forget the weightier things that matter and at the end of it you will have all the money you will have everything but you'll find out you are alone it is very important I was delivered years ago I, I shared with you my experience already I used to visit my family I think it was just once a year because of you know the burden traveling up and down and one time I remember I'm sure she's even watching my dear mom and um, we're having this we have a family prayer and uh, at the beginning of every year and it was time for any other business and she just lifted her hands and pointed and she said well she has an observation 
she said and the observation um, was for me she said well sometimes the same way you are counseling others your own family too wants to be able to have some time we also have issues and you know and even if it's a little time you know i should be able to give them and i went back to the room that night and i remember i cried and i made a commitment i said this is a lesson for me in all my going around the world i will do the best i can to make sure that i honor my family this is a message for someone everybody is calling you emoji they will soon say crucify you let me you need to know listen i'm not i'm not being sarcastic but it is the reality in this world of men when people clap for you most times they are only clapping for themselves through you so it's important to really define know who and what is worth your the commitment of your time your energy many of us invest our energy in the wrong places and to the wrong people and at the end of our lives we are pierced and shredded to pieces because it looks like the people that really mattered you ignore them pursuing those you think matter is someone learning invest in your family some of you have not seen your loved ones they only saw you January 2nd you say I must return back rich and now because things are not in place you are ashamed look swallow your pride and go back home and see them and say God is still faithful yeah. are we together yes strategic friends destiny relationships some of us are very hard working but we are programming seasons of pain because we are not thoughtful you never say hello to anybody you will be in trouble the day you need help christmas you eat everything by yourself you even cut the animal by yourself cook it by yourself eat everything by it's too bad this is not even about this is even it's not even whether it's right or wrong it is sinful to your own life are we together some of us never look beyond ourselves you know that i love you this is an instruction you've never given anybody any hamper you've never given anybody anything you, you, you this was the way you were as a student five years after graduation you are working like this are gentleman in an oil and gas company you've not bought one bag of rice to say please share it to two or three people what no giving is living listen listen there are some of you flashing designers from head to toe and your loved ones do not even have even if it's just a goat or a ram repent in the name of jesus christ repent make sure that you send something home and say this is an expression of my love and thank you so much yeah, but you don't know what they did to me forget about what they did and bless them one day they will not be here and it is the memory of your kindness that will be left is someone learning invest in building quality relationships now that you have some time even if you cannot visit you can just take the time write the names of 10 people ah, how has it been how has this year been may god bless you i just thought to reach you congratulations sorry i could not come and greet you your wife gave birth in february and i could not give birth but it's better late than never swallow your pride They gave birth, you were not there. Burial happened, you were not. Nothing, you are, it's, it's a risk. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The implication of our carelessness affects our children and our children's children. I used to wonder why my parents growing up, they were at every burial. Have you seen naming ceremony? And yeah, come on, do you know the whole world? Naming ceremony, you are there. Burial, you are there. Now, you see, when you grow by, you understand some things. There are certain levels of kindness that someone receives. Mephibosheth, you will only be helped for Jonathan's sake. Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Otherwise, what, would a, what will a crippled man be doing in a king's palace? And Ziba, who had been there serving him, he said, Ziba, even though you are here, go to Lodaba, go and carry that crippled man. You will sit and eat with me here and your 15 sons will be farming for this boy there are things you do in the lives of people today huh 
you may not have all the resources and everything but I'm telling you you are programming blessings in your life there are people who have long gone today but there are others who have vowed that their children will never beg because of something they did while they were alive don't be too selfish and limited in your own world it can't just be about me alone are you learning yes. be kind your family be kind and if God has blessed you here and you have money let me tell you respectfully speaking your money is not doing much if your family and those who have truly contributed to your life don't at least benefit something from it it may not be a right but it is wisdom some things are not about right and wrong they are about wise and unwise Are we together invest in relationships someone who was there for you someone who prayed with you this year you will be surprised God can tell you listen buy a bag of rice send it don't put yourself under pressure the Bible says every man should give according you know according to the blessing of the Lord upon your life and according as you have proposed in your heart so this is by no means to put you under pressure but I hope you know that giving is not just about money money is not the only thing to give you can give love you can give kindness you can give thoughtfulness someone you heard that someone has been in the hospital in maybe you know the general hospital here now is the opportunity you are a bit free you can decide to carry your wife don't go alone Carry your wife and maybe something, even if it's 10 naira, say we just came to greet you, visit with you. May God bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Let me tell you the truth. In the world of men, little things matter. Let me repeat myself again. In the world of men, little things matter. It is not all about money. Money can be very deceptive. There are times that you bring money and the... the the backlog of a negative attitude that follows the money makes it undesirable. Are we still together? Shout amen. amen. So invest in your family, invest in friends, invest in destiny relationships. Apostle, but they don't call me. Love and friendship is a harvest. Don't expect a harvest over a seed you did not sow. Are we together now? Yes. It is about you, but not all about you. You must ensure that you are able to extend to people. Someone was kind to you early this year. Listen, part of investing in relationship, write it down. Write at least 10 people who you are going to tell thank you this year. This remaining part. There have to be 10 people in your life who have made meaningful contributions be honest be vocal be intelligent enough to communicate thanks i've taught you on thanksgiving saying thanks or thank you is not how to say thank you the goal of saying thank you is to make the receiver perceive that you are grateful until the receiver perceives that you are grateful you have not said thank you you don't say thank you at your terms you say thank you until the receiver comes to an understanding that you are really grateful someone gives you a thousand naira you say thank you he gives you hundred thousand you say thank you he gives you a million you say thank you he gives you 10 million you say thank you you are not grateful no just because you said thank you, you are, all of those things do not carry the same weight are we together now the church is the place of wisdom so this is where God helps to file our spiritual understanding. Learn, listen, let me tell you, there are people who may not have the grace for favor upon them, but their sense, gratitude midwives the presence of favor until favor comes. They are too grateful to be ignored. You give them, you give them a plate of food. They will thank you as if you bought them an aircraft. You feel guilty ignoring them because of how thankful they were six months after this they are still reminding you again but there are other people you have made people to vow vows before god that they have to ask for forgiveness later on because of your attitude i'm sorry if it sounds hard i love you you know that but receive it as a take home as a final word learn to be thankful 
don't take the kindness and the love and the generosity of people for granted your head of department was there for you say thank you i told you it's not about giving things we somehow we have a mentality that once you bring money or once you bring items it means you are grateful no gratitude is feelable you can feel gratitude thank you sir for helping me thank you for doing this thank you for doing that and that includes respectfully speaking that includes spouses because sometimes the greatest helpers in our lives are the ones who are most neglected because of familiarity sometimes you need to take a special time parents thank your children children thank your parents spouses thank yourself are we together your boss your staff bosses learn to thank your staff and subordinates don't say if you are tired get out of my office soon you will be alone be humble enough to thank them you you may be the face that is seen but they are the hands that make that face visible don't ignore people's contribution in your life mama thank you thank you and mama says for what all the text messages with the prayer that you sent to me all the time they added to encourage me to what i am now i'm just using this opportunity to say thank you mama may not be able to give you anything but that sworn blessing that comes from her spirit will, will be like a lift to the next season of your life are we together honestly there are many of us that are not grateful i i know this by the spirit it, compared to the investment of God and people in our lives we need to step up there are people who can call uncles uncle have been calling I'm the one who sent you a text five days ago uh, that rents now and you keep you send 10 page text messages then he transfers the money and you send one word thanks you beg with 10 page text messages and one word thanks Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be grateful. One more time. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace. Let me tell you, gratitude can be a stream of income. You can live off gratitude. Literally. Like someone lives off real estate, another person lives off business. There are people you see, you think they are scammers because you, what are you really doing? They live off being grateful. Even to the Lord God of heaven, that you get down on your knees and say, Lord, look what you've done. Look at your hand upon my life. Look at your faithfulness. And God says, but you said thank you yesterday. You say, I'm coming back again. And God says, you've done this for me. You are ready for the next level. And that chapter opens up. One of the greatest ways to maintain relationships, I am telling you, no matter how how ignorant you are about the laws of relationship learn gratitude and you have mastered over half of the keys to maintaining relationships nobody runs away from a grateful person you can run away from a gifted person but not a grateful person please write it down gratitude 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 someone learning number four are you ready for number four this is very serious and I want you to please pay attention the fourth instruction is go on an end of year retreat go on an end dash of year retreat end of year or personal retreat if you want to write it that way go on an end of year retreat you can never sustainably be light and salt until you understand the power and the mystery of retreats. Isaiah chapter 40, please. Let's begin our reading from verse 28. The Bible there spells clearly the condition of man. It says, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary. It's a question. There is no searching of his understanding. Now, 29, it says, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Here is the condition of man that necessitates retreat. Ready? One to read. Let's read together. Even the youth shall faint 
and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall this is not a negative pronouncement it's a description of a condition that is common to all men that the wear and tear that happens to you spiritually emotionally psychologically and even physically provided you are bound in this mortal body that that wear and tear is present with all men that even the youth the bible says the glory of the young men is their strength but that the youth will faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall the bailout is in 31 but they that means not everybody will be interested in this spiritual process but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles the Bible says by this mystery they will run and it will look like they never get tired you are human but why are you not tired because they have found the power and the excellency of retreats and then they shall walk and not faint what is a retreat let's discuss this point for seriously a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord please write a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal direction and fresh empowerment a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment i'll take it one last time that a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment so when we talk about a retreat for a believer it means a time that you set apart to be with the Lord. Retreats can be corporate. That means a corporate organization, a church can have a retreat, an individual, a family can have a retreat. But my emphasis here for tonight is a personal retreat. Hallelujah. And there are a number of things that must be captured in your retreat. So you can call it 4A or let me just guide you many of us do not understand what we need to do during a retreat it's important that i spell this out just to create a guide for us so that you will have an effective and a rich retreat many people just lock themselves and they fast and pray sleep and wake up even watch movies and go out that is not an effective retreat There are a, a few things that must happen in a retreat. Otherwise, it's not a retreat. Number one, thanksgiving. A retreat is a moment of lavish, uncensored thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Psalm 92 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. We're discussing retreats as one of the instructions and now just helping us to shed more light what and what should happen in a retreat number one thanksgiving it is a good thing the bible says to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises to thy name O most high reading to four verse two to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night three upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound verse 4 it says for thou O lord had made me glad through thy walk i will triumph in the works of thy hands it is a good thing to give thanks to the lord your retreat is not complete it's not even started if you do not start with thanksgiving so you are asking apostle if i set out time with god what should happen what are the activities that define a potent retreat number one thanksgiving you lock up yourself and you say lord thank you look what you've done in my life thank you for your mercy is that true you begin to list them you count your blessings one by one it says all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass. He has caught the bars of iron in sunder. Lord, thank you for life. Thank you for grace. 
But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. The last time I checked, statistic tells us that eight people die per second. Eight people die per second. I don't know how, I don't know what's the current figure now. Eight people. That means from the time I started this message till now, count how many people have died. We need to learn to be grateful to God. Be thankful count your blessings and mention them one by one lord look what you've done in my life look what you've done in this ministry look what you've done in this family i am here to say thank you like the one leper the bible records that jesus was on his way passing but when the one leper returned he found him still waiting there he waits for your gratitude thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. For some of you in the midst of the chaos and the economic crisis in this nation and across Africa, God preserved you as if you did not stay here. Some of you did not even have jobs yet you never begged. How could you be so insensitive and careless when you get before the God of heaven, you, you get down on your knees and say thank you. You have changed my story. You have turned my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That all who knew me can no longer identify me because the Lord has magnified fight me in the midst of his people learn to be thankful number two what do I do in a retreat be an honest appraisal of the year or the season an honest appraisal this is the second thing you do in a retreat an honest appraisal appraisal is spelled a p p r a i s a l a p p r a i s a l an honest appraisal of the year past or the season past a retreat is usually is uh, there are all kinds of retreats i'm not going in there i've done those teachings and i'm sure that i will do it again next year but just for you to know that there are periodic retreats weekly there are monthly retreats but there are strategic retreats at defining moments in your life like maybe birthdays or end of year like we have it now because a major season is changing in your life an honest appraisal of the year or the season past in some 30 in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 the Bible says through desire a man having separated himself he says he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom when you when you take out time to be thoughtful and to appraise the year you appraise the year against a number of parameters number one your spiritual life i'm just listing them number two your mental transformation number three your health and your wellness number four purpose and your assignment to what degree did you advance on that wise number five your finances number six your relationships there are indices that you use to appraise yourself don't just get there and say did I make money this year yes I think it was a nice year no we always use parameters like money and physical things to measure how good the year was but the success is a is a composite of many dimensions your excelling in all these dimensions is, is what adds to your overall success your spiritual life mental transformation your health and your wellness your finances your assignment relationships Take an honest appraisal of your life. Is someone learning now? How was this year 2022 spiritually? Can I say I made progress? My prayer life, my word study life. Did I grow in character, loving and, and, and walking in the ways of God? 
How about mental transformation? Did you submit yourself to superior materials to build your mind, build your philosophies and your orientation? How about your health? Hallelujah. How about your finances? Some of you didn't do well this year in your finances. And the product, you see, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your understanding. It is true. The economy only contributes to your prosperity. It's not the basis of your prosperity. It is your understanding, your philosophy, your overall understanding. It is not even what you do. It is what you know that supports what you do. So if you find out that it was a bad year, sadly speaking, financially, there's no need beating yourself down. That's the purpose of a retreat. You take inventory. Some of us were blessed by God this year, but we were careless over our finances. If you take inventory, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions and even billions got into our hands. But there may not be anything to show for it because we spent it like the prodigal son and now we are feeding with the swine. But thank God the prodigal son showed us that there is still hope. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father. In your case, you must arise and go from where you started correctly from. Are we learning? Very, very powerful. How about purpose and assignment? Do you know there are people, I was so touched by the testimony of the gentleman here. He said when he got a job, notice the decline in his life now. There are people, the moment they become blessed, or the blessings of the Lord start speaking in their lives, especially financially. Let me tell you the truth. It takes a greater level of discipline to still maintain spiritual things when you are blessed. Because now you have options. There are many people that look good. They are not good. It's just the economic condition that made them that way because there is no option. You are, you are righteous to the degree to which we see the alternatives in your life. Are we together? If you are poor, don't say you are humble. By what parameter? We have to see, we, 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 you have to be given an opportunity to see that I can go this way, but I choose to remain this way. Now you are deserving of honor. Are we learning now? This is very important. An honest appraisal of your life. Let me tell you the truth. Do you know why a retreat is personal? Because that is a time where you tell the absolute truth before God. If you lie to yourself in a retreat, I don't know what to call you now. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever a time of appraisal is when Jesus himself the light shines his light upon your life and you see yourself in the state of who he is ah, this year I did not do well in my spiritual life this year I was careless this year, as a father, I was not responsible over my family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are before the God of heaven. This year, I've been, I was insensitive to my wife and my children. Maybe because of the financial pressure, I did something that I did not believe I would do. Lord, you see, when you have an understanding from the place of appraisal, now you can cry for his mercy. Thoughtfulness is powerful. To lock yourself and sit down. Ah! I lost this favor door because of carelessness and insensitivity. What can I learn from it? Is someone learning? Number three, what do you do during a retreat? I hope I've not lost you. What do you do during a retreat? A retreat is a moment to get direction for the next season. Please write it down. When you are done with appraisal, next is direction direction your retreat is not over if you come out confused because you have that is the assignment of that place 
Why am I teaching you this? So that you know what to avoid. It means anything that can distract you should not follow you to the place of retreat. For instance, movies. Except if it's a movie that teaches you something. Most of us, you already know your vulnerability. When you are going for a retreat, be serious. You can't carry a series, uh, 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 what they call this thing, people. You know, all the, the movies and all of that. And then you pray for 30 minutes and then you just promise yourself that I'll just watch for 10 minutes or football or something. And before you know it, three days, people clap for you thinking you were flogging it out with destiny, whereas you allowed yourself to be distracted. See, look up, please. Laugh, but listen. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was said where before him he endured the cross and despised the shame if your phone would distract you off it personally during a retreat i off my phone completely or i can put it on flight mode if i need to use it maybe get some information from it you can on it by 12 midnight for 10 minutes so that all the text messages that should come in come in and then you off it back in case there's an emergency Apostle, I'm off my phone. You see, that you should go and flog out that issue in a retreat. The fact that you cannot give up uh, gadgets just to spend time with God, it means then that you may not be having the kind of focus it takes for a great destiny. Someone shout direction. direction. Our speed in life is based on the direction we have. Your life will always slow down if you don't know where you are going. Even in driving, if you know where you are going, you will run with speed and arrive there. But if you don't know where you are going, you have to slow down in case you are wrong. It's dangerous to turn the path of destiny in confusion. Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a prophetic word for someone. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Someone shout amen. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God can direct men. In the place of retreat, you are flogging it out. And God says, listen, this location you are, you need to move to another one. One word from God can bail you out. Are we together? I told you that the power of God only supports what is the will of God. The, 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 the administration of spiritual power is with respect to the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Direction. Number four. What should happen in a retreat? Are you ready? planning and resolutions for the next year when you obtain direction from god it is now time to plan planning and resolutions for the next year so you have opened up yourself for appraisal you know what is right and what is wrong you have obtained direction from god it's now time to plan i think it's god's servant bishop david oedipo that said praying without planning is playing without knowing it is true. There is a place for planning. Most believers don't plan. We stumble into our tomorrow and we meet it unplanned. Sadly, we do this as individuals. We do this as corporate organizations, as families. People just enter the year sometimes with blind, unrealistic resolutions. You have to settle down and to plan. How will my 2023 be like? Okay, God has spoken. I have heard. I know where he's taking me. I need to plan. Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30. Luke 14, 28 to 30. For which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first and counted the cost? That's planning. The assignment of planning is to help you count the cost. Whether he has sufficient to finish it 29. 
less happily after he had laid the foundation and is unable to finish it all that behold him begin to mock him saying 30 this man began to build and was not able to finish the ability to finish also depend on proper planning I'm going to plan my spiritual life for 2023 my work made me so busy and it affected my prayer life my word study life I have to create a system that factors in my life please look at me do you know why many people uh, I'm, I, and I'm saying this now with respect to you know the younger generation do you know why many people finish from school colleges of you know education universities and then their spiritual lives go down because within that environment there is not much you are doing you don't have responsibility of children you don't have other things so it is just maybe lecture prayer fellowship and that's all now you are a father of three now you are a father of four now you are a senior executive in a corporation that your presence can be called anytime they can call you impromptu and say please be in London tomorrow by evening you have to redesign your spiritual life to factor in the current reality in your life if you use the template of campus where you could pray for eight hours non-stop you will be an ineffective person that worked because you did not have certain responsibilities for some of you sadly maybe then your parents were alive then certain people who were who supported you were alive now you have to redefine your approach to insist that by all means your job your growth your responsibilities do not affect your spiritual life this is the product of planning 350,000 naira five years ago is not 350,000 naira today do you agree with me and this is not just a nigerian thing in all fairness this is a global thing it affects everywhere it's just that of course we have a unique expression of our own but i'm saying that generally there is no nation that has been immune to a lot of you know economic heat and all of that so it means you need to plan you need to plan i'm earning five hundred thousand per month or two hundred thousand per month sometimes well it's not for me to speak to you but sometimes part of planning can be to not give birth to the next child yet yes sir you know in africa we we do a lot of things sometimes without thinking we just keep making mistakes that later just pound on us you cannot be earning hundred thousand and you have six children it's not realistic you can't be sending them to everybody people can help you but it's not their responsibility to take care of you are we together now you ruin the life of those innocent children until they are recruited to be terrorists and the rest because there was no responsibility when you want to build a house the bible says sit down that kind of course you don't do it standing you sit down that means your mind is calm now that i'm about to do this am i prepared for this Oh, I'm earning 100,000. I hate that job. I need to resign. If you resign, what is the plan? It is 100,000. It may not be the best, but it's still not the worst. At least it can cover your shame in terms of your basic needs while you're trusting God to scale higher. Someone shout planning. Please take the time to plan. You are a leader over any ministry or any organization here. Have a personal retreat to plan. In Koinonia, you already know. 31st December 6 p.m. on the dot the prophetic word for the next year is out without fail there is no excuse whatsoever planning it's not something that happens just overnight no this is the last service it was planned the next service is already planned see this is one of the blessings that we learned in the seminary respectfully speaking you see most of the organizations that we may call orthodox and this they are master planners Pentecostal charismatic circles if we are not careful we can randomly do things and we say as the spirit leads it is important to plan your child is going to school in January they've increased his school fees have you seen the PTA letter until you see don't buy the cow yet you can manage with chicken and you can't go and buy a cow of 500,000 and then be begging for money for 100,000 for your child planning it may not be for everybody but this is a prophetic word for someone in a retreat please plan 
okay the house rates have increased i may not have my own property now but how much do i pay 1.5 2 million naira how did i raise the 1.5 2 million naira the last time oh it was a gift will it remain a gift forever no so i need to plan if you know it will come through relationships start greeting the people in advance since that is this part of planning it is funny but it is true please let me have your attention we have a lot to do listen the house of God is a place of wisdom and if we are bankrupt of wisdom our lives will be hard don't send somebody a text Two days to help and say Calvary greetings. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm um, just, just, I, I'm just asking out how you are doing. And then ten minutes later, here comes a long list like an exam question. Just to, no, 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 no. Planning. My wife is pregnant. She's going to give birth in nine months. That's nine months' notice. How do you say? Oh, I didn't plan for CS. What does that mean? nobody prays for cs but an intelligent person you will plan what if listen we hope for the best but we prepare for anything faith is not foolishness don't be angry oh i love you this is a retreat this is a i'm i'm, I'm teaching us because this thing we we need to bring wisdom to the body of christ you don't move around when your wife is already in the theater you are just calling and say wickedness nobody likes me no shout amen please plan as a father if you did a bad job over your family don't worry don't beat yourself down but plan why is the spiritual life of this family going down okay it's because we don't pray maybe that time of fellowship is not there maybe i'm too busy to spend time with my wife and children how can i be a better father i'm an exceptional ceo but my family is dying something needs to go well Create a program, even if it's once in a month, I'm going to spend some time with my family. Anybody who calls you, tell them, please, I'm spending time with my family. This is one of the blessings of the white and people in the West, sincerely. You can literally give an excuse that I'm spending time with my family and they will respect it. What our great, wonderful nation, spending time with your children. So it's us that don't have to, okay. Let's finish up. What should happen in a retreat? Obtain the doing grace. Write doing grace in capital. Your retreat is not complete until you obtain the doing grace. There is a grace called the doing grace. The doing grace. Because your plans and your resolutions will come to naught if you do not put them to action, to work. The doing grace has a mandate to put fire upon your bones until there is execution. The assignment of the doing grace is to not give you rest until you put your thoughts, your plans that are on paper, you make them work on two legs. The, in John 13, 17, John 13, 17. If ye know these things, the Bible says, happy are ye if ye do them. So it's not enough to know. I have said I'm going to buy a car next year by the grace of God. That car is 5 million naira. I've raised 2 million naira. We thank God for grace. God is granting me grace. As I plan, you obtain grace. You start doing. Doing. I've made up my mind that my family will be happy this year. My wife and children will not have cause to say I'm an irresponsible father. That is a, an excellent plan. What are you going to do about it? You obtain the doing grace. Do you know? Let me tell you the truth. Without the doing grace, all plans will come to naught. The same way many of us, you can go back to your January journal and see many beautiful things you wrote. And some of us, sadly, not even one of them has been done. It's because you missed the last ingredient of your retreat, obtaining the doing grace. Lord, let that grace come from heaven that makes men to run, that makes visions to run. The doing grace Romans 7 19 Romans 7 19 Paul was speaking and he he vocalized his frustration 
he said for the good that i would i do not but the evil which i will i would not do that i do that means he's saying listen by my spirit there is a willingness to do this but i find another law there is another energy that is depleting my passion and not giving me the impetus the drive to move forward for someone here who has been planning planning forever without doing in the name of jesus let this be the season where the grace for execution comes upon you <laughs> hallelujah one day i'll get that land You've not gone around the neighborhood to even see where any empty land is. Chances are excellent you may never build. Listen, even if it is one billion you need, it will still come by faith. Don't be afraid. And for someone you want to build a house, your budget is 50 million or 100 million, depending on the kind of house. And all that you have is 1 million. Let me tell you the truth. One thing I know is that signs follow. They don't go before. If you cannot take a step of faith believing God to help you, it's better to die in his presence than to live jumping outside of his presence. There are certain risks you cannot escape. It will always be by faith. You can take that one million and buy as much blocks or sharp sand and go and pour it on that side there and say, Father, this is a sign of faith. I have made you Alpha, be Omega. I started this building with you. Now your reputation is part of this architecture for your namesake and you'll be surprised. Someone will call you and say, are you building? Say yes. Say God just said I should give you 10 million. And before you know it, the day you finish that building, if they ask you where did the money come from, you say sincerely, even me, I've added everything. I don't know where the rest came from. God is bringing healing to someone. Don't be discouraged. I don't just mean bodily healing, healing in your mind. Because the Lord is just ministering to me that there are people here who have been frustrated. It looks like your life never moves forward. There is, you are not doing anything. People are already speaking and saying, what kind of person are you? It's like a complete mark time in every area of your life. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. One more time. Hey, you are the one that we pray. something I know about God I don't know everything about him we remain students learning him but let me tell you something about God God restores this is a word for someone apostle even my wasted years my goodness did he not say I will restore the years don't sit down and say by now I would have built the house by now I would have had the children by mm -mm -mm -mm. there's there's no point for regret you are talking to the God who owns time He's not limited to time. Look at the gentleman. He said for how many years his life had been on drugs and all kinds of things. But restoration, just like that. There is hope for a tree, even if it be cut off. Some of you, even in terms of establishment, it looks like nothing is working in your life. All kinds of witchcraft, delays, demonic things, fine rest. My God, bah is able to restore men and take 10 years and put it in one year yes this is true for you whether in politics and governance this is true whether in your career life i've not got a job and things don't seem to be working remember tonight is an impartation we're getting there now listen carefully ladies and gentlemen the god that i know and the god that i serve can restore Apostle, 
my prophetic grace the the anointing upon my life would have been at a dimension now but i became inconsistent at a point i became careless i was I, you know i was just frost don't worry don't worry apostle i would have built by now you can imagine i don't even have a plot of land i am 50 years fine rest the god of heaven that i know that you know that you have come to serve can give you rest with the dignity of kingdom integrity rest that you don't have to bend your head in shame because you maneuvered and bribed your way around no you give the healing and grace that my heart always hunger for oh. Let me speak to a family here that had it raw 